Hello and welcome to the lecture on the Waiting Earth by the Sri Lankan English resident writer Punya Kanti Vijayanayaka. The lesson objective for today is to study the character portrait of the heroine of this book, Selohami, particularly with regard to the way the woman is perceived as being, the, as being symbolic or representative of the nation. We will first start with a very brief introduction to the text. Vijayanayaka's 1966 novel, The Waiting Earth, is based in rural Sri Lanka. It was modeled on what Vijayanayaka believed was an authentic portrayal of village life and what it would mean to experience this lifestyle in a newly independent nation. Vijayanayaka focuses her attention on the territorial ownership of lands and the challenging state of disinheritance of landless peasants. If we look at specifically the historical context of this novel, we can say that it is based on the peasant resettlement of the 1950s and 1960s Ceylon, based on the government measures to alleviate the poverty of the Sinhala majority demographic. Let us now go to the conceptualization of women as the nation. According to the scholars, the gendered motive of women as nation is constructed upon a binary stage of viewing the male as the author and subject of the nation, while the female stands for the nation itself in need of male protection as the reproducer and nurturer of future generations, as well as being the transmitter of cultural values. And it is through this reading that I approach Vijayanayaka's representation of Selohami as in the novel, her body and sexuality are deliberately equated to the earth or the nation by the author. In order to look at this in detail, I'll be reading from page number 45, an extract from page number 45 in the book, which you can find in chapter four. Let us first go to this extract. She was careful not to pick all the lies from her head. A few she were necessary for keeping off headache. So she believed. Sometimes when she was seated thus, she would think of the new life stirring inside her womb. When she was cooking, cleaning or pounding, she had no time to think of it. She moved about hardly aware there was a life separate from her own. But now, when she was pleasantly idle like this, now she was aware of it. This time, it had to be a son. She would never admit that a daughter could make up for the loss of a son. This could never be. A daughter bought joy, it is true, but once she married, she belonged to her husband's family. No, a man must have a son to feel himself whole, to know that his name, his family, would be carried on after his own death. And it was a woman's duty to give the man at least one son. If she failed him this time too, she was afraid to think anymore. Instead, she felt her stomach carefully with her, ha with her hands. There was a certain hardness, the flesh not yielding to the pressure of her fingers. There was no swelling yet, only this hardness. When she filled out, she would know if there was hope of a son. Catherine Harney had said that a too swollen belly meant a girl. She had not spoken yet to Polisinho of this new one. She looked over the patch of newly planted greens in the compound. The tender stalks of onions were already visible above the earth. Like the earth, she too would wait in silence until he saw it, until he saw with his own eyes her swollen belly. Like the earth, she too was shy to boast too early. So in this novel, you can see that Selohami em embodies the earth. She has the characteristics of having the strength, endurance, resilience, commitment, and devotion. She is represented as a mother figure who always devotes herself for her husband, as well as for the sake of her children, despite the fact that her husband alienates her, and despite the fact that her children, apart from Opasena, so her children, Piasena and Isabella Hami, don't even show her the same devotion that she shows them. And she is also, we can also describe her as the paragon of patience, 
because she embodies the earth. She is the baiting earth. She is the personification of earth. She even tolerates her husband's accusations of infertility when in reality, she has actually remained loyal to him. And therefore we can say that she is symbolic of the baiting earth. According to the critic DCRA Gunatilaka, she is as steady as a rock. So here let's look at the physical characteristics of a rock. We know that a rock is hard, it is solid and steady. And that is precisely how Selohami is. She is strong, steady and enduring, right? However, despite these characteristics, we can be critical of this because it can be, a pro it can be quite problematic to look at Selohami this way, right? Because if you look at her strength, endurance, commitment and devotion, we see that these are all for the sake of her husband. These are all for the sake of her children right? Then what about her needs, her desires? So you see that in terms of devoting herself completely for the sake of her husband, for the sake of nurturing and rearing her children, you see that her individuality and her personality are completely subsumed, right? And in this particular extract, we see that it is talking about carrying on the family name and that it is only the son who can carry on the family name. And here I would like uh, to, uh, to think about uh, Maxine Hong King's, uh, King's, Maxine Hong Kingston's uh, novel, The Woman Warrior, which is an Asian American novel. And there is a particular quote in that novel. It says that raising children, um, it says that raising girls is like raising geese. If I repeat it again, it is raising girls is like raising geese. And that is actually from, that is actually similar to what Vijayanayaka is talking about uh, in terms of Selohami's thought process, right? Because you can see that Selohami also thinks a daughter jo brought joy, it is true, but once she married, she belonged to her husband's family, right? So therefore the woman, the woman or the daughter is actually looked like a position as a person who loses her values, uh, who, who loses her worth and value when she marries on to another family, right? So it is only the boy child who is given predominance over the girl child because the boy is expected to carry the ancestry, right? He's expected to carry the name. So you can see to what extent Vijayanayaka shows that uh, the women in this rural village have completely internalized and naturalized this thought process, this belief, right? the notion that upon marriage, a daughter would lose all her worth and value. So for that reason, Selohami is hoping for a boy and not a girl child. And we know that if we read the novel, uh, her next child is actually a girl. It's Isabella Hami, right? And apart from that, you can see that in this narrative, the geographical landscape or the earth or the nation is always intrinsically interconnected and interwoven with that of the woman, right? So here you can see to what extent Selohami is the symbolical personification of the earth, because like the newly planted greens in the compound, she has also conceived. She is with child, but just like these tender stalks, she is not showing yet, right? Her belly is not physically swollen yet with child, with her conception. So therefore, throughout the book, you see that Selohami is always equated to the nation. That is, and it is not only Selohami. Actually, most of the women characters in this novel are always equated to the nation, right? So that is why we say that it is not only in terms of Selohami's endurance, resilience, commitment, and dedication, that she is steady like the earth, that she is symbolic of the earth, but also in terms of her body and sexuality as well. And it is at this point, I'm going to stop this uh, brief lecture. Thank you very much for listening.